I healed my weight gain. I healed my um, my teeth, the enamel on my teeth. I healed my gums. I healed my rough elbows. I healed my digestive problems. I healed my acne, right? I healed everything because I learned how to balance my hormones. Hello, my name is Naomi Judge. I'm a naturopath and clinical nutritionist. I've been working with women for the past 16 years, working on their hormone levels, working with women with, with who struggle with cyclic moods, and particularly over the last few years, I've been focusing on women with PMDD and severe PMS, anxiety and depression within their cycle. And one of the things I've noticed is women can only get so far in terms of working on their lifestyle, working on their supplements, working on their diet, you know, that can have massive positive impacts on their health and well-being. But for some women, I noticed there was kind of a point where they just couldn't get any further. They felt better, but then suddenly they would get into their luteal phase and suddenly those dark moods would come in, those ruminating thoughts, those insidious ideas, everything there, just coming back, the depression and the anxiety would slowly creep back, no matter how healthy they were being. And I realized there was more going on. Hormones are messengers. And they are even messengers in our brain. I'm not sure that many understand that our hormones are actually messengers to our brain. So of course that they directly affect our mood. Can you speak a little to that? How people understand what mm. hormones message and communicate what in the brain? For instance, um, thyroid hormones are a progesterone agonist, right? Meaning, meaning it works synergistically with progesterone. So if your thyroid is not functioning optimally, you're not gonna feel a sense of calm and balance and ease and your menstrual cycles are probably gonna be all messed up. And you know, so it's, 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 um, it's a synergistic relationship like that that happens um, with our hormones and our brain chemistry, right? And as soon as we're stressed out, adrenaline surges, you know, we produce norepinephrine and epinephrine so we can run from the tiger, right? And those are the excitatories. And what happens is like, in, I think anxiety is a very interesting example because, you know, you think of anxiety as, as, a, as a state where you're really kind of amped up. Right, but it's really considered a low mood state. And it's because you don't have enough inhibitory brain chemistry, your serotonin and GABA, to, um, to counteract your excitatory, right? Your dopamine, your norepi, your epi. And so you go, I, I'll, I call splat on the ceiling, you know? So, so it's, um, everything's interconnected in the body, you know, and I, and I, I was thinking recently about how, you know, we say mind, there's a mind body connection, <laughs> but there's, there, it's more than that. It's all one, like it's not separate. Every cell in your body experiences and feels emotion. So whatever your brain is thinking is going to every single cell and it's registering there and it's creating hormone balance or hormone hell, right? It's creating one of the two. I noticed that many of the women who come through my programs, especially sign up for that first, you know, first foundational 21 day journey into your nervous system. And I would mm. say, Robin, that they are often the ones that would, if we were in a real classroom, we're all, all online, but if we were in a real classroom, they're the ones that are like on the front seat. Like yeah. they are so into this. They're so invested into understanding what is going on in there? I want to say it's it's more like they're they're actually ready to look at their stuff, right? Why would that be? Help me understand why a person, why a woman, going through the hormonal changes around menopause, why does that seem to open them up? But what I know is like towards um, the later latter part of uh, perimenopause, going in, you know to post-menopause, once your period is stopped for at least a year, is that um, it's a pretty cool time. 
I get really excited talking about it because, you know, our progesterone decreases, right? It's been decreasing for years now if you're postmenopause, but also estrogen. And and <laughs> Estrogen is you is is the hormone. It, it's the hormone that makes you a woman, right? We have we have way more estrogen than men, but it also is the hormone that keeps you stuck in serving others. It's an in-service hormone. It's a how can I care for everybody else but myself? So as we get lower and lower in estrogen, we actually start taking care of ourselves better. We start asking the question, what is it I want for myself? We start not giving a flying, you know what, about everybody else all the time. So there's an expression that goes something like, you know, don't set yourself on fire to keep others warm. Well, we've been setting ourselves on fire for our entire lives until we get into the latter years of perimenopause. And then all of a sudden we start speaking our mind. <laughs> and I think that that's what ended uh, women up in like insane asylums and, you know, crazy houses because they're like, who is this person? She never and used to say things <laughs> like this. She never used to speak up for herself. What's happened? You know, and so we actually start saying what's on our minds. We actually um, start new careers. Like we are like, okay, this is my time, you know, and as we age, women get more like men. Testosterone becomes a bigger player in our hormonal profile and men get more like women. So you'll see men crying at movies, you know, as they age. It's like, wow, like what's going on here? Is that a tear? <laughs> Are you crying? <laughs> and it's kind of a sweet time for women. So many women, I mean, this is really like aging me, but like I was thinking of Cloris Leesman, she was a comedian. I think it was Cloris Leesman. Like she didn't even start her comedic career until she was in her 50s or 60s. And, and I wanna say um, Louise Hay, you know, she didn't even start her whole mega empire until she was much older. And so it's really our time. And that's why, you know, you see so many women like in that front row seat saying, oh my gosh, like I am so ready to learn. I'm so ready to take care of myself. So one of the things that we see a lot in people who uh, experience different degrees of, of stress and trauma is that at some point, Robin, it's like their body goes into this collapse and this exhaustion. Yeah. In, in the trauma space, we call that the freeze response. Okay. And there's definitely changes in the physiology that happens over in the nervous system. And I'm wondering if there are changes that happen over on the hormone system. And I know, I know you're not the expert in trauma and I'm not going to, going to put you on the spot and make you, make you talk about all of, all of that piece. But, but I know that you've seen this in the, in all of the women that you've worked with. Mm -hmm. There's this, there's this element of I'm still going, going, going and trying doing, doing, doing. And then there comes a point where I can't do anymore. My body has just crashed. Mm -hmm. So given that for us, that would be the difference between stress and trauma. Do you see differences in profiles of hormones in those two different populations of, of the, the, the still yeah. doing, I'm still trying yeah. and I I'm, I'm in exhaustion. I'm, I'm in my collapse. I'm depressed. I'm just, I'm getting through life, but I'm struggling. I'm really struggling. Yeah. And, and it's, and it's because, you know, you experience, so, you know, there are, are those single moments when you experience some crazy trauma, um, you know, mm -hmm. we, we've, we've seen it in, you know, those who have served in wars and, you know, but, there are a lot of things that cause PTSD, you know, and, and what happens is, is that we can't get our bodies and our brains out of fight or flight mode. You know, we're, we become hypervigilant, we don't sleep well, you know, and, and we're still trying to push through and do life as we do life. And so what's happening there hormonally is that you just have these chronically elevated uh, levels of cortisol. 
So you have, you know, um, too much cortisol all the time. And you may have noticed like if you, you know, went through or experienced trauma or you've just been a very busy person all your life, your short-term memory goes actually. <laughs> God, yeah. Right. Like talk about, talk about more stress because then you can't find your car keys. Then right. You can't find your cell phone and right. And then you're just adding more stress to your life because every, everything seems to go wrong. And it's actually because your cortisol levels are affecting your short-term memory. Yeah. So your cortisol levels, like cortisol hits your hippocampus and it damages your short-term memory. But the good news is you can get it back, of course. But then over time, and this is what happened to me, is that you actually wear yourself out. So it, so it used to be called adrenal fatigue. I, th- I like that because it kind of explains what's going on. It's not really called that anymore. It's really a hypothalamus pituitary adrenal gonadal, maybe thyroid axis problem, right? But you actually wear yourself out and you just don't produce enough cortisol anymore. You don't produce enough cortisone, which converts to cortisol. So if you look at lab results, you know, if you did a circadian rhythm, right, you would see that this there was this elevated, you know, rhythm, maybe just continually high all day for years and years and years. And then now it's barely above low normal or it's below low normal. So you have to build yourself back up, right? You have to give your body the resources it needs. And that's, you know, lifestyle, food and nutrients, right? You have to shift all of those things in order to build yourself back up. And and that's where I think for most women, especially, they wait to do something until that point, because up until then, it may be hard, it may be stressful, but they're still able to keep going. And it's not until they crash that they're like, okay, I have to do something different.